Friends, welcome to another episode of Blossoms and Bourbon. So Jason and I were just talking about this. This is like episode 18. 18, can you believe that? Anyway, thank you all so much for hanging with us. My name is Mark, I'm the owner here at Creative Occasions. Welcome to my workroom. Um, we are gonna be continuing kind of this fall look at floral design, and, and as well as you know, thinking in terms of fall, uh, both for color palette and textures and all those things, we're gonna be you know, exploring some other concepts and ideas in florals. Um, you know, I'm big on mechanics, right? And so the mechanic today is going to be Curly Willow. And the Curly Willow, um, if you're not familiar with this product, it's just amazing. Um, it's these sticks I'm playing with here. And when you have nice, good, fresh Curly Willow, it does this, you know, it'll bend. This is actually snapping a little bit, which is gonna work fine for what we're doing it for, because we're gonna push this into this container it actually kind of reminds me of the Hanakubari that we did in the Halloween design, actually, where you push some branches down into a container to get them to become part of the mechanic for the floral. And that's what's gonna happen here. This piece broke off earlier, so we wanna be sure to use him too. And we're gonna add some accent pieces of this later. So it's not really necessary that we have it all contained inside the glass vase, but let's just do a little bit more down on this end. This is actually one of my favorite looks in a container. Um, of course, would always do this in a glass container so that you can see this beautiful texture of these branches as they kind of uh, work their way around in the glass um, and really work nicely to support the flowers. Okay. I forgot the water. Do you want to get me some water? <laughs> So the concept is we're going to use that curly willow just as the mechanic that's gonna hold the flowers in place. Um, going back to lesson 101, remember we wanna be sure to keep any foliage below the water line, remove that and make sure it's not there so we don't have to deal with it. All right, so just chunking a few carnations in there. Um, the, I'm gonna kind of do this zoning technique with the flowers. So I'm gonna have all of one type of flower kind of in a zone, another type of flower in the next sort of row or zone, um, just cause I thought that might be kind of fun and kind of interesting. I did choose a monochromatic color palette for this arrangement. Uh, monochromatic means that all, they're all the same color. So we're using one color basically in the design and the colors are shades and tones of orange. One thing that we wanna talk about with this design is contrast. And contrast comes in a floral arrangement through the use of a number of different things. It could come from color. So we could have contrasting colors like yellow and blue would definitely be a way to create contrast in a floral arrangement. Um, we could achieve contrast through the different shapes of flowers. So you could use round flowers and flat flowers to kind of create that contrast. In this particular design, we have the color the same. The shapes are not all the same, but what we're gonna create contrast with is the different textures of these flowers. And again, that's one of those things that you hear me talk about a lot because I love texture. I think it's important in flower world and it just makes your arrangement so much more interesting. This is gonna be a very low kind of contemporary arrangement, um, just to keep you up on that as well. My friend Free Spirit, you knew you'd see him again, right? Cause I just love these guys so much. And it's a flower, not only is it beautiful, but it works incredibly well for this color palette. So 
So be sure to tell me in the comments, what is your thing, favorite thing about fall? What is it that you like about fall or do you like fall at all? I personally am a huge fan of fall. It's one of my favorite times of year. I love it so much. I'm kind of a temperate season guy. I like spring and fall because the temperatures are a little more moderate than they are in the extremes of summer and winter, for which I'm not a fan. All right, so we have a zone of roses, we have the carnations, we have the hypericum berry. Um, let's do a little orange alstroemeria coming off the end so that that kind of balances the hypericum. I love Alstroemeria. It's one of the sturdiest flowers. It gets a bad rap because it's inexpensive, but honestly, it's such a workhorse in the flower shop. It just holds up so well. It comes in beautiful color schemes. Um, it adds a nice sense of texture to it. And did you know that Alstroemeria is commonly called Peruvian Lily? And I think it's called that because the shape of the bloom is very much shaped like a lily. Um, so just a little fun fact there for you. All right. You know, if I have one of these roses left on the table, I'm going to put it in, right? It's going to happen. It's just going to happen. All right. Now, Hypericum, I have sumac. So sumac is a foliage, and I'm gonna put that next in here because I want to incorporate this fruit in this arrangement. You know, we did an episode a couple back about adding fruit to your design. I thought it would be kind of fun to do that again with this tonight. So we're gonna add a, some of these uh, clementines to the arrangement here. Uh, but they need a little bit of support, so we're going to have to put a little bit of greenery in there just to kind of hold them up a bit. And that's going to be another great texture in this arrangement. I don't know too much about the origins of sumac or, or how it grows as a tree, but I do know that it holds up incredibly well here in the shop and we use it quite a bit. It's really a nice hardy foliage. Okay, so that I was just making sure that the side that you were looking at looks as nice as the side that I'm looking at over here. All right, so let's talk about the technique for piercing fruit and putting it in an arrangement that has a clear base. We talked about that relative to fruit in Oasis and the wood picks, the koei picks that absorb the water, but we don't have that ability here to use the koei pick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pierce the fruit with a hard, uh, a thick wire. We're gonna go through the thickest part of the fruit and just kind of pierce it straight across. Then we're just gonna bend those wires up into kind of a hairpin shape. And we're just gonna twist them together. All right, let's do that again, because I know I'm gonna need several of these. So, through the thickest part of the fruit, Straight down the other side. Bend them up into like a little hairpin. Then twist together. Now, another thing that 
really is probably not the best for this arrangement, is if we were to just shove this wire down into the arrangement. Then even though this wire is coated, we would have the cut ends of the wire down in the fresh water along with the other flowers. So how can we combat that? Well, one thing that we can do is use a stem. This is the stem that I cut off of the Alstrom area. And we're gonna get that to about the right length for the arrangement, maybe a little bit shorter there. We're gonna kind of match that up to the length of the wire. Use our wire cutters, cut that off a bit. And then use some floral tape just to tape this wire to the natural stem of the Elstrom area that's no longer being used. And having the tape over it is going to help kind of protect the wire from, you know, bleeding out into the arrangement. Um, it will help with longevity for sure. It also kind of blends in a little bit better with that as we are using it. So then we'll just take that and we'll just put it right in there just like we would another flower. So let me go dumpster diving and find another stem. Good length. That's all right. That wire is already shorter than this stem. So we'll wire that up. We did an event uh, last weekend, actually, where the um, arrangements all had fresh fruit for a baby shower. And the baby shower theme was cuties, uh, like the cuties that are the Clementine fruit brand. So all of the arrangements had that fruit in it and orange slices and it was super cute. I get it cute. Dad joke, I'm so sorry. This actually is a, a technique that one of the folks on my staff showed me using old flower stems. When you're putting a bow that has a wire on it into a fresh arrangement in a glass vase and she wires and tapes the stem onto an old flower stem and that makes it more suitable for use in a clear vase. Uh, thanks, Laura. You're doing a great job. All right, so put this one in and then let's do a slice just to kind of give you a sense of what that's going to look like too. So we essentially would do just create a slice across the fruit and we want it to be the pretty part and, and look like that so we wouldn't slice it in the other direction. And we want it to be a pretty wide slice too because again, we're going to be putting wire through this. So that's going to be an important element of it. Gosh, that smell good. And in this case, I'm probably going to use a slightly thinner wire just because this is pretty soft. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pierce, run straight across to the other side, make the hairpin, twist it in place, and then back to our dumpster diving for another stem. And I'm going to hold this one up a little bit upside down just because I don't want that wire to tear through the fruit. That's part of the reason I used a thinner wire. And we're going to kind of tuck this in among the other fruits. So I think it'll be okay. This is certainly something like that baby shower that we would do for an event um, and not do for something that you really expect to get a lot of longevity out of because this fruit will start to dry up and go bad after a bit. All right, so not only do you have that really pretty look of that slice of fruit in there, but you can smell it, which is another really cool thing about this. So I'll take the other half, do the same thing. Let's get this one in there on this side too. All right. All 
I'm not going to put this one in, but I would probably, if I were doing this for a client or for my home or whatever for an event, I would probably add that last one in just to kind of make sure that that whole look is complete. Uh, let's spin around, take a look at the front. Let's put another carnation right there. And this um, curly willow is quite secure. I mean, these stems are really not moving around much as I'm adding stems to them. Um, I do want to create a little bit of a level right here. I don't want everything to be too flat in that one section. There we go. Now, just to add those last little tendrils of some curly willow across the top. By the way, never throw this part away. Give this a fresh cut, put it in water. This will root and you can grow your own curly willow. Super cool. Now I'm kind of bending that up on the end to just kind of make a little insertion group there. Let's see if this works. I may have to actually wire that together to get it to be nice and secure. Let's go for something a little bit longer. Too many little side tendrils on this. We need to edit these out a little bit. Just warm this up a little bit if it feels like it's giving you some resistance. All right, I'm going to put one more piece of hypericum down there on that end to kind of disguise that little insertion point where the um, curly willow is. So in flower world, there's this thing that we don't like and that's bunny ears. And so this looks to me like bunny ears. So I'm going to tuck that in, kind of get rid of that. That's the nice thing about it being fresh and flexible. I'm going to do the same thing for this. So this is a look at a fall design using a monochromatic color scheme, all oranges, but lots of contrast in the arrangement. The contrast comes through the use of different textures, different flowers, different shapes of flowers. Um, and in this case, fruit which adds yet another texture to it and a great fragrance too. Um, so give this a try. Work, play with Curly Willow. Let it work for you as a mechanic um, and explore that as an option. It's great fun. All right. And so kind of following the whole theming of orange with this, I actually chose for the bourbon tasting portion of this, um, a bourbon that's called Eagle Rare. And honestly, if you ask people, hey, what's your favorite bourbon? So often, so, so many times, people will say Eagle Rare. It's just an incredibly popular uh, product. It also comes from the Buffalo Trace Distillery in Frankfort, Kentucky. And it has not only this kind of beautiful coppery color about it, um, but on the nose, it has a sense of orange to it. And that's part of the reason I chose it to kind of go with the arrangement that we did tonight. So. Buffalo Trace, uh, again, as I think I've mentioned to you, is one of those distilleries I've been to a couple of different times and has so many great products. And this is just one of them. 
Uh, it is typically a product that's offered in their tastings when you go to the distillery. So, such a happy sound. Kind of a similar golden coppery color. Um, a little bit richer than the, the burning chair that we did in the last episode, but that's beautiful. Yeah, there's a little bit of the orange that you can definitely smell. Definitely smooth. Um, it's not one of those spicy, hot finishes. It's, it's much more smooth. Um, and there again is a little bit of like that cocoa flavor, uh, a little bit of an, like an almond nutty kind of flavor. A nice finish, you know, and I've talked about where, at least in my palate, when it finishes, this one definitely finishes, kind of it rides in the middle part of my mouth. Um, super nice. Um, obviously, there's a reason why so many people say that they like this one. So I guess that about wraps up this episode of Blossomed and Bourbon. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed Curly Willow as a Mechanics, looking at a variation on fall and a taste of Eagle Rare from Buffalo Trace Distillery. Before we finish, I need to remind you to like and subscribe to the videos. Uh, there's a little bell icon, so please click on that. That will serve as a reminder. You'll get reminders when we're posting new videos. And so I know that you don't wanna miss these. So until next time, Cheers to you and to flowers every day. Thanks again. Bye-bye.